Are you facing challenges in your parenting journey? Are you curious about how to revolutionize your relationship with your children? Have you ever wondered how your own self-awareness and communication style can impact your children in their voice? Do you want to create a nurturing and harmonious environment for your family? Are you ready to go beyond traditional parenting approaches and embrace a mindful and empowering way of raising your children? Join me after the intro for a conversation with a very special friend with whom we will answer this and many more questions. Stay tuned. Hi, I'm Rosanna D, and this is Forgiven Tribe, a podcast where we explore what thriving in life means and how we can achieve it irrespective of our past, current condition and expectations that those around us or society in general may have. Let's go. Welcome to the Forgiven Try Show. I was recently talking with my mother about the impact of apparently okay behaviors, okay from an adult perspective, of course, that can still be traumatic for children a truth that can hardly go well with parents when they are trying their best. And I can tell you, my conversation with my mother wasn't going that well either, until I recognized that parenthood doesn't come with instruction manuals. And even the most well-intentioned parents can find themselves facing unexpected challenges. But there is hope at the end of the road, as a relatively new field emerged out of psychology and that promotes what is referred to as conscious parenting, as a way to create and nurture mindful connection with the children in our life. So today we want to learn about conscious parenting, unravel its principles, shedding light on how it differs from more conventional parenting approaches, examine its profound impact on child development, and understand how it can help parents create a nurturing and harmonious environment for their family. And we dive into this fascinating topic with today's guest, Nina Cruz. Nina is a certified conscious parent coach, social worker, and meditation teacher who has made a mission to support parents through shifting archaic parental paradigms, many of which contribute to increased stress, anxiety, overwhelm, and feelings of disconnection for themselves, their partners, and their children. Her approach to coaching revolves around trauma-informed care that puts others at ease, providing a safe space for everybody to facilitate their individual healing and growth. Hi, Nina. Welcome to the Forgiven Try Show. Thank you so much for taking the time to be with us today. Hi, Rosanna. Thank you for having me. I'm excited about our chat. Me too, because I wanted to talk about conscious parenting for a very long time. So I'm excited to have you on the show today. Yeah. But before we dive into that, actually, I'm a little bit curious about you because I mentioned just a few things about your bio, but I really would like to start with you. And in particular, how did you become a conscious parenting coach? Yeah, well, it was sort of by default. (laughs) I I was led on a journey, as you do when you have children, because initially uh, I was doing social work, then I got into a bit of health and fitness. I was doing wellness coaching and then I had children and um, you know I I was thrust into a, a new world a new me uh, being a mother and uh, I began you know doing a lot of personal growth I was doing personal growth previous to children but when I uh, became a mum, I threw myself into learning more about myself and it led me on a journey to conscious parenting um, as I met uh, Dr. Shafali and studied her work and realized that through my own challenges and my own, uh, you know, control issues uh, early on, uh, that I was able to not only help and support myself and my children, but also other parents on the journey, which, you know, they say is it's natural to be a parent, but I I don't think so. (laughs) It's uh, a different uh you know it brings up your stuff so it's it's a whole new world and it can be very overwhelming and stressful for people absolutely especially because everybody has their own experience but then in the end we tend to replicate what we know and we know Mm -hmm. what our parents have done with us and and the world changes with time right so the children are not living in the same world we grew up and we were oh yeah 
So that's a, f- a first challenge I- in itself. But it, it's funny to me, for example, when I was a, a teenager, I always said, oh, you know, I will never do what my mother is doing with me. <laughs> with me, you know, when I, I, I will be a, a parent, uh, I, I will uh, behave in a different way. Well, eventually yeah. I'm a, a parent, but I have nephews and niece and I can see I'm different. Now, my role might be different, but when it comes to uh, teaching them or supporting them, I'm completely different. I'm from yeah. my mother and her generation. So uh, I, I think it's, uh, it's important to, to acknowledge that we don't have to repeat some of the mistakes, perhaps, that they have done with us, but we can learn from yeah. the mistakes. So Yeah, definitely. So... Let's start about uh, talking about conscious parenting and what really means and uh, what are the principles? Well, consciousness is awareness. So it's bringing awareness to your parenting. And conscious parenting is, it differs from mainstream parenting because it really turns the model upside down. Instead of being, um, you know, I'm the parent, I'm all knowing and powerful and you're lesser than, you're the child. It puts everybody on a level playing field where your child becomes your greatest teacher. So there's no greater than, lesser than. And, um, you know, you start to bring awareness to what's really going on. So you shift and you turn the mirror on you. Often, you know, we're focusing on our child, what they're not doing, what they are doing, what's not working. And conscious parenting brings the attention back to the parent. So it's a journey for the parent. It's a growth and inner work for the parent and the focus is taken off the child. And in that process, the work that's being done with the parent, the child shifts, the energy shifts, you come to the child in a new energy. So um, it's a really profound way of parenting and it it takes something to do a little bit of, uh, you know, the inner work and look at your own patterns. And, and these are generational patterns, which you just talked about, like often when we go into parenting, And you're like, I don't want to do what my mother did or I don't want to do what my father did. And what actually happens is you tend to do what you don't maybe are aware of it. You're possibly doing what they did. So and and, or you could be going the other way, but that might not be authentic either. So conscious parenting does not involve any control or fear based strategies uh, and or punishment. So it's real focus is connection, connection for the parent first and then to the child. So it's everything stemming from you because when you realise and you know that anything that's happening outside of you, like anything your child does, has nothing to do with them. It's what's elicited in you. It's what they're bringing up. It's like uh, childhood legacies that are brought up. So they, they trigger us. They're not purposely going out to trigger us that trigger was already loaded within us it's just erupted and these these are this is from our past so it's a beautiful opportunity for self-growth and also allowing the child to be in their authentic self Uh, you know you're not controlling them you obviously have you know a safety net around them you've got boundaries there's loving limits but you're allowing the child to grow and unfold in their own unique way so it, it's very different to the, the mainstream way or, you know, all the shoulds that we have as parents, like the sh- they should be doing this and they should be doing that. The shoulds are conditioning. So they, anytime you say should, know that is part of your conditioning. It's not truth. And, and conscious parenting allows the parent to know thyself and get back to the, their truth so they can show up in the moment connected and available to the child. And, you know, everything unfolds, really. Your, your child, will, you know, is your greatest teacher and the lessons don't stop. <laughs> yeah, I, I like what you are saying, actually, uh, about shifting the perspective. When we are triggered, we think that yeah. the child is uh, misbehaving. while well, in fact, mm-hmm. just showing us what we have inside us already. And I, I think mm-hmm. it's very difficult to, to accept that. And, and to shift that, that perspective. So mm. there are two questions that come to mind. Mm. First of all, what are the most common challenges that parents need to face? I, I can 
probably say that this is one of them. Mm. Uh, when they are changing their parenting style and they are going into conscious parenting. Uh, yeah. So um, perhaps if there are other differences, I mean, this is a, a mm. major one, but other differences with more archaic uh, parental styles. Mm. Mm. Well, yeah, um, the differences, you know, conscious parenting is connection before correction. So often we can go in to fix something. There's no fixing, changing, improving. There, there is being in the moment. So it really involves presence. Um, and being present means you're not in the past or you're not going into the future. One of the hardest things in conscious parenting is looking in the mirror yourself and taking self-responsibility because it's easy to blame. So when you come to conscious parenting and you know what shows up and you realize firstly you can't blame anyone anymore that it's not about anybody on the outside it's not about your child it's not about your partner it's not about the job it's not about the money when the illusion falls and you really you bring it back to yourself you know that's that's like you know removing the floor kind of thing like the, the, it's all different there's a whole different way of living from the the old way the old paradigm so it can be quite hard at the start because you have to look at yourself and you know like gosh i've been a yelling parent or i've been really angry at my child and you know because they didn't do something my way or they didn't do it right you look in the mirror and you go wow my my mum was really hard on me she micromanaged me or she you know i had to be the good girl i had to be perfect and and that's the hard piece to look at and accept. And, but, but once you, you see that, then it, it really gives you that momentum and that, like, I do not want to do that. And when you see your child and, you know, they're crying, they've spilt something and you're yelling at them and you see them and you're like, come to the realization, like, does it really matter? Like, you know, spilt milk, does it really matter? So it, it's a, unlayering process to come back to your truth to come back to who you really are not all the layers of, of patterns and beliefs that that have been conditioned in childhood between the first seven years of our life so it is scary in one part but then exciting on the other side because you, you're coming back home to yourself that's a very interesting so if you had to list the short-term and long-term benefits that mm we can see in in children to start with and then yeah. the rest of the family because the dynamics within the family is completely shifted yeah so what sort of benefits have you witnessed uh, since you have been doing this work yeah well there's less behavior is the child you know like often the parent comes to me and there's behaviors going on uh once the parent shifts the child the behavior cease to exist because you know, it's like if you're pulling a rubber band, if you drop one end, there's no tension going on. So the resistance has been lifted. And, you know, so there's less resistance because you come to the moment of resistance in a new way, in a new energy. So there's more connection with your child. You're, you're listening. You're, you're, you're not dictating and telling them what they should or shouldn't be doing. And, you know, the child's... Uh, is able to be their authentic self. So if they want to speak up to you, they can speak up to you. You're not going to yell, do not speak up to me. How dare you speak to me like that? Like, it, it doesn't mean you can't have a conversation about that actually hurts my feelings or, or those kind of conversations with your child, but you allow them to space to speak up and they are generally more adjusted. They're more resilient. They're more open. They're going to share with you because they know they're not going to be punished for sharing. Yes, there'll be consequences, but you're not going to send them to their room. You're not going to ground them from a party. So they feel supported. They feel like you're, you're, you're part of their team. And for parents, there's more freedom. You're not like micromanaging. You're not at your child every moment trying to make everything perfect. You're allowing your child to experience the experiences of life, which means they might not get invited to the party Obviously, you take actions, appropriate actions, but you allow them to feel that and you allow to hold space for them. So 
as a parent, you're not trying to fix everything and, and create some super child. And you're just allowing them to be a child in their childhood. And as the parent, you can kind of pull the reins back a little bit. And that's pretty freeing. And also you feel more connected to yourself. You're more in tune with your intuition, which means you're going to parent from your intuition, not from your ego, which means the ego wants to fix things. It thinks it's broken. It thinks it needs to do whatever it takes to feel better or to feel enough or to feel perfect or feel the best parent, you know, be the kindest person. That, that you don't listen to that voice anymore. You don't go down that pathway, you create a new pathway through your intuition, through your heart. And, um, you know, it doesn't mean there aren't challenges. You just navigate the challenges in a new way from a heart space, from an intuitive space. So it, it's quite different. So I, I guess that to some extent in, in this way, the old development of the child will be completely different. And on the other hand, there will be trust perhaps developed in, in the parents. Because I, I can imagine that if the relationship is a little bit strained, giving trust becomes a little bit more difficult, right? Well, you've kind of got to come from a clean slate because we all mess up. In, in childhood, children are meant to mess up. The reason, you know, they're in childhood is so they mess up and we can support them and we can show them the process, how to move through it. Like, how do you deal with this? Or we, we ask them, and how would you deal with this, you know? And we work together as a team. They're, you're like their guide. So in terms of what they've done before, we, we've, we've had our own mistakes. It's like, um, you know, we, we like, oh, my God, they've forgotten something. How could you lose that? Or how could, have we forgotten our mobile phone somewhere? Have we lost something? Like, well, no one's yelling or punishing <laughs> us. So we treat them like a human being, like, a, you know, a divine being that they are. And yeah, okay, they've had mess ups. That would be open for a conversation. You know, I'm a bit worried. You're going to a party the last time what happened and you can talk about it. And that I was really, you know, that if they didn't do the right thing or right kind of inverted commas, um, you know, you have a conversation, you, you meet with them. How, ask them, what do you think I should do? You know, what, what would you do if, I, if, if, I, if you were my parent? You know, like have some discussion. And this is what opens a new dialogue with your child. You're starting to listen. They're like, wow, mom or dad's really listening to me. They're taking on my, my suggestion. And this empowers them. Also, their self-esteem increases. So the party comes and you hold boundaries. Like you need to be back by 10, say no drinking. But if they're 17 and they have a drink, but they come to you and say, I'm so sorry, I tried champagne or something. You ask, you talk to them about it, you know, I am disappointed, but, you know, we, we said no alcohol. Okay, you had, I'm happy that you've come to talk to me. What, what was that experience like? Did you like it? You know, you, you have a dialogue with, you, with your child. You want to keep the channels open. So there's no right or wrong. They're going to experience stuff and you're going to be there to guide them and, and show them the way through. And, you know, they're going to feel bad for having that drink, say, naturally. You don't have to ground them but then there could be a the next party that comes there's some different boundaries that are held so you you know there's no right or wrong way you navigate with your child each child is different you come to the child in a in a new way you know you can have a boy and a girl they're going to be different dynamic there's going to be a different energy there's going to be different way of approaching things so this is where the intuition comes in that you you follow what you feel. It's, an expert can tell you many things, but it might not work for your child. Like you have to attune to your child. You attune to them. You know what, you know, you know how you can connect with them. You know what they like doing. You, you know, I play handball with my son or we throw a ball to have a chat because that's the time to chat. Like if I just go and sit with him, he might want to chat about what, you know, it's like when we have, uh, you know, someone wants to talk to us about someone, you're like, no, I'll do it tomorrow. Let's have a chat tomorrow. We get to decide. Why can't our child decide? So it doesn't have to be on our terms all the time. It's interesting what you are saying is the whole communication changes and you almost talk to the child as, I wouldn't say they are adults, but they are more responsible uh, perhaps than we would like to admit uh, mm. to 
you know, more ar archaic or traditional parenting? Yeah, I, I think it's more that you, you talk to your child as their powerful being, that they're powerful, that they have, that you can help empower them. You know, you can allow them to feel empowered. So, yeah, I mean, they're going to have certain responsibilities and obviously not responsibilities. We're still, you know, if they're living at home or there's certain rules and, and uh, boundaries, but it's definitely empowering them to make choices, to, to mess up, to fall apart, to be emotional, to whatever. I mean, we've all experienced childhood and, and how did we want our parents to truly be? Did we want to be punished? Did we want our parent to go, you know what? I know you messed up, but I, I love you and I'm here for you. And, you know, always reflecting back to how you wanted to be parented is really helpful. Like, oh, you know, check in. Would I do this to myself? Would I speak to myself like that? Or, or often we actually do speak to ourselves pretty badly. <laughs> um, well, our ego does, <laughs> not our true self. But, yeah, it's, it's really opening that, that dialogue and you can create a new dialogue and a new energy with your child today. You talk about the children messing up. What about the parents? How they yeah. mess up with yeah. their children when they are moving towards conscious parenting? What are the mistakes? Well, the yeah. Child? Well, firstly, when you're conscious parent, it doesn't mean you're perfect. So there's no perfect parenting. So you're going to mess up either way, either area, <laughs> either way. Um, you're going to learn though. You'll learn quicker probably because you're aware of it. You see it, you, you, you spot it. And even if you did yell, you're clean up, you're pick up. You don't yell for 20 minutes. The period between when you, you catch yourself is quicker. <laughs> so, you know, you go and repair it. You say, I'm so sorry. I messed up. I, I yelled. I don't want to be the yelly parent. I want to really listen to you. And you know what? I realized you tell your realizations. I realized that that's, I felt like not heard and that, you know, or, or whatever it is, you, you look in the mirror and you repair it with your child and they're learning as well. They're learning the process of, of, of repair and of going, you know, oh, I'm sorry, you know, whatever it might be, whatever happens, you know, they're, they're learning that process through you. So that's also a key for conscious parenting. You don't need to teach your child anything. You just need to be the example and you guide them. You be the best example. You be the best version of you you can be. And, and that's probably, you know, really key for, for this work because it then ripples out into all areas of your life, all relationships stemming from your relationship with yourself. Nina, before you mentioned the word boundaries, and yeah. it, it came to mind, is a good sound no still allowed in... Oh, yes, of course. <laughs> no is still allowed. And, you know, pick your nose. If you've got a strong-willed child and, you know, no just rattles them, like my child, my both actually don't like no. Um, when he was younger, I used to, instead of, you know, going, he'd want to go somewhere and, you know, I was like, oh, do you think we'd be able to, you know, bike ride to preschool with your little sister and then he'd go mm, oh no I don't think we could do it she wouldn't be able to get up the hills and so pick you know obviously there's certain things yes you say no but if you depending on your child this is where you're attuning to your child I knew my child in any if I say no too many times it just loses it so I had to allow him to figure it out and then he would go, oh, okay, we can't do it today. Or maybe you could do it another time. You've got to know your child. It doesn't mean, yeah, you don't say no. You say no at certain things. Like, no, we're not going to have ice cream tonight. But we can have fruit, fruit salad. You know, so you work on it. So are there specific techniques that perhaps we can suggest when it comes to boundaries? Mm, yeah. So... With conscious parenting, there's kind of two, two boundaries. There's stone boundaries and sand boundaries. Stone boundaries are set in stone, like, like you, you have to wear a seatbelt when you go out. or uh, They're set in stone. They're health and safety. You know, you need to go to bed. You can't have an iPad all night. You, you won't get sleep. So there are set in stone boundaries. Sand boundaries are more flexible. They're more lived, kind of lived boundaries. You know, you they move a little bit more um 
And it's really important to to hold the boundaries and to have that safe space that that kids can push up against. They're going to push the boundary. They're going to test it. All healthy development for, for children to test the boundaries. And then they come back into the safety net and, and they learn and we learn. And, you know, um, we're both growing with it. So, yeah, there's two types of boundaries and you have to really figure out what are your non-negotiables um, and be clear and let the children your child or your children know these are non-negotiables you know like um obviously there are you know certain rules in society there are certain rules in school but you can have certain rules in your house as well and then you got to let go a little you got to be flexible so because we drive ourselves crazy with the rules with with what they should or shouldn't be doing you drive yourself crazy so allowing to let go because if we come from control uh based parenting and we're trying to enforce things all the time you're going to butt up against resistance your child resistance and i guarantee you you'll get a mess to clean up that means a repair to clean up and that doesn't mean you're giving in all the time but pick what's important to you and let go of the rest often there's a lot to let go of in parenting is we're we're holding on we're trying to control everything and control is the thief of connection trying to control your child disconnect so if you want to come to your child to connect to connect with them first for yourself come in a connected energy controlling if especially you've got a strong-willed child you'll butt up against resistance and two egos trying to battle out doesn't doesn't work something has to give so usually you'll yell and your child will yell and you'll both end up feeling guilty <laughs> or feeling frustrated with each other and the problem there is the child doesn't get the lesson if you send them to their room they don't get the lesson because what do they think about how mean my parent is they're not thinking about what they did so this is where punishment doesn't work yeah, I, I love what you're saying, and in particular the fact that everything starts from us adults mm. rather than mm. them. We we need really to be aware of our world and what we think and what we believe, mm -hmm. what is mm -hmm. right, uh, what is not right according to society, but also based on uh, all the conditioning that we had when we were. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Well, I often get parents to write down all the things that were, what was being good as a child, what was good, you know, and what was bad and look at it all. And it's like amazing to look at it. And then you go, oh my gosh, because reality is there is no good or bad. Like we put our projection onto it. We, we put it on it. There just is, there is just is what it is. My child spills the milk. Oh, it is. Yeah. Just built milk. It's not, it's a bad child or it's a bad child for yelling out in class. No, they might just be excited. They're children. It, regulation can be hard. So we put all these lenses on, good, bad, right, wrong, naughty, compliant, you know, and it messes us up. It really screws us up <laughs> because then we're looking out of the lenses of that and the, what we focus on, we experience and we create. So you're looking for you know, looking, say you're looking at all the things your child's doing wrong, bad behaviors, I guarantee you're gonna get more of that because you're focusing on it. What you focus on creates your experience and it grows, expands. So often I do that list so parents can see, wow, geez, I got a lot of, you know, we got a lot of stuff going on. I haven't even met my child, come to my child yet. And already I've got what's good, what's bad, what's right, wrong. And you start to parent from a neutral space. So the present moment, neutral, not charged. I mean, when we have a charge, when we're triggered, that's the work, the look at what is, the, how did that, my child make me feel? What was that feeling? Because as I said before, that feeling's already in you. Your child hasn't done anything. That feeling was within you already. And these are the childhood legacies that we've, you know, that we've, we've still got within us that we haven't. Maybe when we were eight, we couldn't, um, we felt shame and we couldn't feel 
anger. My parent, you know, my parents told me to go to my room. I couldn't be angry. No one was holding space for me. So we have anger inside of us. So our child will show us, whoa, or you go, wow, I have anger, a lot of anger inside of me. Then becomes the process of being with those, embracing those emotions. So we don't project them onto our child. So our child can be a child and we can actually parent from the here and now, not from our childhood or not, not from our child, our inner child. That's what's happening. We're parenting from our inner child. That's why we lose it <laughs> or we blame the child. Yeah. I, I can totally see what you're saying. And in fact, while you were talking, I was thinking of my parents and in particular my father. When I was yeah. a he, it, it was a fantastic father uh, all around, but there was something he couldn't deal with, tears. So yes. mm. growing up, I couldn't cry. My sister couldn't cry. Wow. And, and you know, you, you keep all those emotions inside and you have to put a bright face, a big smile, even though inside perhaps you are mm. dying or at Yeah, least, yeah, yeah. Right. So that was definitely something that I had to work uh, through. Mm. I can relate as well um, to that. I kind of was sent to my room when I was angry or upset. So I was on my own. So I'd also learned, you know, being emotional wasn't safe and, and not being able to express yourself um, and putting on the mask that you had to just put on this appearance. That, that's like a betrayal of your true self. We survived childhood, uh, not, not saying, you know, this is just how it is. That would have been a generational pattern of your dad. He wouldn't have been able to cry. It, it would have been his dad didn't allow him to cry. So emotions weren't felt or experienced. So, you know, there's no blame with our parents. They did the best they could with what they knew, but now we can know better. And, you know, with, with the emotional stuff, if we can't be with our own emotions, we can't be with our children's. So what I found early on was um, I, I really struggled. And, and then I had to just be with them in there be with myself because what happens is you want to fix it you want to stop it because you can't be with your own emotions so um it does take time to to start to feel because often when we um you know aren't able to feel as a child we just go into our head we just think logical everything is in our head we like disconnect from our emotional body and um yeah so you know going through that experience I mean your sister that's just yeah it's just the generational programming but also um it's just her not being able to to feel her feelings that she can't hold space for her children and um yeah that's that's what happens that they get passed down the pipeline until you know someone goes oh I, I you know realizes or comes to the awareness or comes to the work or and, and wants to, to stop that, that chain happening. Absolutely. I, I totally agree and love what you're saying. So thank you very much for stressing that point out. <laughs> yeah. And uh, uh, talking about emotions, uh, in yes. children in particular, because children, especially, you know, we, we see sometimes at school, they can be really, really nasty with each other, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So how can conscious parenting help children managing their own emotions and perhaps develop empathy for others because sometimes mm. we really don't have and we don't learn that empathy with others until perhaps we are in the in our 50s right yeah well in younger years children the brain's not fully developed for empathy we, we kind of expect kids to share at a young age but they're not even there their brain's not developed to share but we're like you must share it's a nice thing to do you know but they just want to hold their toy that they just got, you know, and then they're told they have to share. So, um, you know, development happens a little later for children. But in terms of you being emotionally present, emotionally resilient, being, you know, feeling your feelings, allowing the child at home to feel their feelings, you're not going to have this mountain of, you know, you can imagine like a, a pot of hot boiling water, you've got a lid on it. Well, if you're shoving your emotions in there all the time and not lifting the lid, 
and then one day you lift the lid, it just explodes. So you're giving your child time and space to process their own emotions. They know how to do it. You, you'll see it when they have a meltdown. If you don't get in the way and allow them and hold the space, they ride the wave of emotion. They are really upset and quickly dis dissipate and then they're on to the next thing and they forgot about what happened. So allowing them to, that's learning how to regulate their own emotions. Um, and in terms of, you know, empathy and all these, you know, emotional resilience, you, you be it, you be the example, you show them, you know, uh, you can have conversations about what's going on at school. You can talk about how, when we love ourselves, we can love others and we can look after others and we look after nature and we look after the animals and, you know, you begin at home first and, you know, you develop that, uh, you know, in everything you're doing, and, you know, even just as planting seeds in the garden, you have a conversation, like it becomes the kind of lived experience. It's, it's not like you have to go and read a book and then you have to go and sit them down and we have to talk about emotional resilience and intelligence and you've got to, you've got to just embody it. And that's the key is to be it. So your child sees it and you know what? They may not. That's the other side of it. They may not, they could be mean to a child. Is it ever too late to start applying conscious parenting? Principles? No, never. And you know what? I've had clients that have like adult children because you're still relating to people. You're relating to children. You're relating to people, like partners. So the key is that you don't even have to have a child to do this work because you just have to have had a parent any kind of parent, really any caregiver. Um, so no, it's never too late. And you only need, you only need one parent to, to begin the journey. You don't need your husband or your wife to get on board. If, if, if they're not willing to, you know, you don't, can't force someone to do, do the work or, but they will see the shifts that are occurring with you and they might get curious. Of course, in an ideal world, two would be great, but the kids are going to see the contrast and they're going to feel the contrast. So things will come up because obviously if you're not doing punishments and then the other parent, but you navigate it and yeah, uh, often the, the other parent starts to get curious and want to know a little bit more and maybe not do the deep dive into their, their selves, but they start to implement um, and do a few different things. The children learn by contrast as well. So it can be great lesson. They're learning. Mom does this thing, dad does that thing. Who do I go to? <laughs> Which one would I go to? Uh, you know, and they might open up to the one that's, that's really available more. And, and so they're going to learn. Um, it, it might cause some friction between the parents. And, you know, that's what I'm saying that often the, the other parent starts to come towards conscious parenting because you know they see the results they see the change um but if not it just is what it is you you navigate that dad does this or mum does this and the children learn and grow both sides and we can't contour our child's life you can't control anybody but yourself and you know, that's another myth. There's a few myths of conscious parenting. Well, you can't, you can control your child. That's definitely a myth. The only thing you can control is how you show up, how you show up in the moment, how you show up to your child, how you show up to your partner. That's all you, that's all you got control. You can't control the weather. You can't control anything external. And the, the, the problem is that we grow up in a culture that we're externally focused. So this is time to become internally focused and because we're putting our focus on everything outside of ourselves that we can't control. The only thing we can do is ourselves. So whether the child has one conscious parenting or not, or two or single parent or blended family, whatever it might be, they, this, is, this is how it is. There's, there's not like... You can't go, okay, I need that most ideal life for my child. It has to be this way, this way. That's controlling. <laughs> if you come at it, it has to be this way. You've got to just unfold and allow the child to do what, you know, what unfolds for the child, how you unfold on your own journey because your child is teaching you. It's like, and you're learning along the way. So, 
yeah, if you're trying to contour anything or, you know, your husband has to be conscious parents, it's not going to work because you're coming from control and you're trying to force someone to do something they don't want to do. Absolutely. And I guess in, in the way you also teach your child to be more independent in, in their own life. Mm. Um, yeah. I would use the word also take responsibility for their own choices. And yes, empowered. Empowered in, in what they want to do, which I think is uh, probably the number one uh, role of, of a parent or an adult. In, uh, in yeah. You know, I'm so tempted to take you a little bit off road. Yes, that's all right. It's all right. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> and I, I, because every problem that we see later on in life comes from this programming that we have as a mm -hmm. child. So very often we talk about, especially in psychology, there is a lot of talk about reparenting yourself when mm -hmm. the parent is not able to, to do so. And obviously mm -hmm. we are talking about adulthood. How can conscious parenting principles can help us in reparenting? Mm. Is it possible? Yeah. Well, it's pretty much reparenting yourself. The work is pretty much reparenting because you're starting to turn inwards. You're starting to meet your own needs instead of meeting your needs through something else or through your child, which often can, ha can happen. We want to be seen by our child. We want to be noticed. We want them to, do you see me, you know? This is all in childhood, all we ever want, want and wanted, a child wants and what we wanted is to be seen, heard and understood. Like, do you see me? I, I used to remember going, mom, mom, look at me. I'd do a dance, you know, like, look at me, you know, and they were busy. <laughs> and they'd be like, quick, quick, look at me. Uh, so we start to meet our own needs. We start to, to feel into what, what do we need? You know, we're not looking outwards and that's, that's the difference. We're starting to look within. You acknowledge yourself. You're starting to do it all for yourself. You're starting to meet those parts of you that like suspended in childhood and you're bringing all the parts back to the whole. And the beauty of that is that once you start to do that work, the story, the child starts to shift because you've shifted. You've, you've started to meet yourself. Um, so the, yeah, the work is reparenting yourself your own inner child which which is within you that when when you get triggered it rattles the cage it rattles the cage your ego will try and try and protect you and you you've got emotions that that haven't weren't felt in childhood that were shoved down shoved down and she's screaming in there or he's screaming in there like do you see me do you see me and it's because we're looking outside to be seen you're looking at social media we're looking at our partners to see us, our children, they can never see us how we want to be seen. Only job, <laughs> the only person that can see us like that, which is what our inner child is screaming for, is us. And when we realize that all the stuff we're trying to do on the outside is not going to work because it's the ego, the ego will never meet our needs. The ego will, will never have enough, will never be pretty enough, will never be smart enough, will never be the best parent enough, you know, or we've never done enough, <laughs> that, that's just not going to work. So when you go, oh, uh, it's the illusion. Okay, bring it back to me. What, how, what do I want? What do I need? How do I need to look after myself today? And you start to meet those needs. And when something comes up, child says something, and you go, oh, that's not about my child. Oh, my child just said I'm the worst mother ever. Like, right, okay. It's not really about me. It's not personal, but it's bringing up a feeling in me. Okay, they're upset with me. I didn't give them what they wanted. Okay, they're going to say, I hate my mum or I hate my dad. You're the worst mum ever. Then it's an invitation to go, oh, that's making me feel like helpless, like scared or I'm sad. And then you be with that. You're not emoting it. You're not reacting to it. You're not going, right, how dare you say that to me? Go to your room. You're... You're like, wow, you're really upset with me, right? Because I said no. Then you go and do the work later on, maybe go to the bathroom, do it later on at night. And you're like, wow, I really, that really hit me. It's really hard for me to be with that feeling. And it's not a logical thing. You're not thinking it. You've, it's, it's a felt thing. And so especially if you shoved a lot of emotions down, it's a process. 
of starting to be in your, embody yourself, be in your body, feel your body, feel your feet on the ground. Start to embody yourself because we were stuck in our head so much. And the head can't heal. The head can't can just think the program, like just regurgitate the same stuff. I, I love that. I, I can imagine uh, certain situations where, you know, that uh, perfectly applies. Yeah, uh, yeah, but yeah. you mentioned this thing of uh, changing and having all these emotions. How can we let them go, or how important it is to let go of those emotions mm, uh, mm. to allow that change to happen? And yeah. I would like to throw in the concept of forgiveness, uh, which is yeah. the main topic yeah, of yeah. this uh, podcast. And in particular, to ask you if forgiveness has a role when we start rethinking our parenting practices or, or principles and when we want to shift the dynamics with our children? Yeah, well, firstly, you have to be in, not in judgment of what you've done or what happened or, or the incident, the situation, you know, whatever it may be. You, you can't be in your heart if you're in, in judgment. And then, you know, it's really accepting of, wow, yeah, I, maybe there's something in your past that, that happened with your kids or maybe you've, you've been yelling all the time and been an angry mom and, or a dad or you've been reactive and not been in your heart as much as you really desire to be. Um, so then it would be really accepting that and, and holding space for that and sitting with those emotions. The, those emotions like guilt and shame and um, unworthiness and and all these sadness and anger, they've all been in us way before our children arrived on the planet. So this is within us and we, we get busy. You know, busyness takes away us away from being. Busyness is the ego trying to make us to-do lists, always busy, never enough time. And you have to kind of stop and be in the moment and start to process those emotions, start to sit with them, which means you could be focusing on your breath, just opening up to what emotions might be there. It might be hard. Maybe in the moment of when you feel the emotion, that's the time to go to your child, like depending on how old and, you know, obviously they have to be in safe space. Go to the bathroom, I need five minutes, and then cry it out. You know, if, if you've been disconnected from your emotions, it's hard to sit with them if you don't, if you, because you're going to go to your head. So taking that time, if you're triggered, that's the moment. I know I'm triggered. I need to cry it out. I need to go to the car and be here for a moment. So if something happens, you hold, hold yourself in that space. So you allow the emotions to move through you. Um, and then you'll, you know, you, you may go, it's a process. So no one can say how long it's going to take you or what's going to happen. It's your process. But what will happen is next time you get to um, maybe the same issue or something comes up, a tr the same trigger, oh, you maybe notice it's a little less. I'm not like crying. I feel a little bit something, but I don't, I'm not like bawling and it's not like I don't feel helpless. So you're going to notice gradually what initially really sent you off or triggered you or... Um, derailed you you're going to notice like oh it's a little less and it's just going to get a little less and a little less um until the point that it would be like oh that doesn't really bug me it might bug someone else now and then you know you'll be like wow that doesn't bug me anymore so you'll notice it starts to dissipate it starts to um dissolve yeah so you've accepted you know like kind of forgiveness acceptance kind of entwined forgiving yourself but accepting is also, I think they go hand in hand. You've really got to accept what happened to you or what didn't happen to you or how you reacted or what you did. I mean, we all have histories and, and often we don't process that we just go to fix. So when you know fixing is, is part of the egoic agenda, notice, when am I fixing? Because when you fix something, you think something's wrong, something's broken. And you're not broken. We're not broken. The ego makes us think we're broken, but we're not. And so it's really just starting to become aware. And it, 
you know, you don't, it doesn't all happen all at once. It's a layered process, a layered process. You know, you work on one thing and then you notice something else and your divine being knows exactly the right process to take. So yeah, it's, it's a real journey, but it's a journey back to yourself and it's a journey to connect yourself to your own divine self and also allow your child to be connected to you. I, I love what you said, we are not broken. Uh, because no. having suffered from depression, you know, I, I had that feeling that everybody was mm. their fingers toward me saying, you are broken. Mm. And I'm saying, I'm not, yeah. I, I'm just going through a, a low deep <laughs> in my life. Yeah, yeah. You in ego or creator. You're, when you step out of the egoic agendas, you can step into creating what you want. You know, there's plenty of very successful people out there that have had pretty horrific past. You just need to step out from the egoic agenda into what you want to create. And, what it, and that's following your heart. What do I love? What do I want to do? And that I also do this work with parents where we have more of a vision of what you want. Connect to your heart. How do you want to be as a parent? How do you want to show up? How do you want to feel in your home? What kind of energy do you want to create in your home? Because it's really important also to start to have a different mindset. Because otherwise, the ego will hijack you. So a lot of the work can also be just starting to notice when you're in ego and when you're not, when you're in your higher self. Because the ego will beat you up or build you up or beat someone else up, be, build them up, beat them down. And it, it's a circle. It, it just will self-perpetuate the same issues the same problems the same the problems won't fix in if you're in it, your ego but you have to have the awareness <laughs> uh, absolutely everything starts from from that point. yeah yeah thank you very much for, for highlighting that i think it's uh, extremely important nina i'm aware of time and i would like to come back to you before we yes this lovely conversation and in particular, to ask you, what are you working on? What are you planning? Is there anything at all that you want to share with us and our audience? Yeah, well, I, I'm, I've actually got three books that I've co-authored in. Um, one uh, was in Australia called Navigating Motherhood. And I write about um, consciously creating your epic mama journey. Mother journey, mama journey. <laughs> and then I, I wrote in another little book, uh, um, it was more of a letters to my son, which was a beautiful little compilation of mothers writing to their son. Actually, I think it also had dads in there too. Um, and the last one that I um, wrote in was in the US. It was called No Problem Parenting, which is a book of, full of other experts for parenting to, to uh, raise resilient and uh, children. So that that um, was really great. Uh, so I've written three different books. And at the moment, I'm doing one-on-one -on -one coaching. I'm getting into a bit more group coaching. And I have some free resources on my website, a 12 Days of Presence program. So really getting present. How do you get present? It does some exercises, how you can get present with your child, with yourself. Um, really short, quick tips how to get present. Because when you're showing up now, you're showing up in the moment, you're not charged, you're not triggered, you're neutral, can be neutral. So then all that, this is where the magic happens in the moment. So if our listeners would like to get in touch with you, for example, and learn a little bit more what you do, yep. where they can find you? Yep. Um, so I've got my website, ninacruzconsciouscoaching.com. Um, I'm on Instagram at Nina Cruz Coach and Facebook. I've got Nina Cruz Conscious Coaching, as well as a private group called Conscious Creators Collective. So there's lots of free resources. I've got lots of videos, programs actually in my private group as well. We will put all these links in uh, the description of today's Awesome. Episode. Awesome. Nina, Thank you. Final question. If yes. there's one take-home message that you would love everybody to remember from this conversation, what that would be? You can't go back to your child's childhood. So, you know, make a decision. Make a decision. If you can't make one for yourself, make it for your child because you can't go back. And, and this is one thing that's also helped me stay really present. Now I want to look back, you know, on my parenting and on my 
children's childhood, um, you know, with some really beautiful magic moments and memories. I don't want to look back me yelling all the time and, you know, me losing my losing it and punishing. And so, yeah, I think that's really important. And, and it's never too late to start the work and really transform any relationship in your life, uh, especially the one with yourself. <laughs> wow, that is beautiful. Thank you so much. I hope that this episode has provided insights and inspiration on how conscious parenting can transform the relationship with your children, create a nurturing and harmonious environment for your family, and promote holistic child development and emotional well-being, allowing your children to thrive and blossom. And I want to leave you with a quote from Zig Zagler, who said, the best way to raise positive children in a negative world is to have positive parents who love them unconditionally and serve as an example. Nina, thank you so much for accepting our invitation, for sharing your love story and positive message with us. And tell us about the principles of conscious parenting. We absolutely love the conversation. Thank you, Rosanna. Thank you. It was great. Thank you. Well, we would love to know what you think about this topic. What's your relationship with your children or the children in your life? However good that is, I'm sure you can find useful tips and insights in today's episode. And if you have additional questions that perhaps we didn't address today, as always, get in touch, let us know. We will strive to seek those answers for you. Also, don't forget to check Nina's website to follow her on social media. And we just learned she has three books out, so you will find all the links in the description of today's episode. Hopefully not, but if you have been affected in any way by the topic we discussed today, as always, I invite you to seek professional help. Join me next time when we will continue exploring inspiring and challenging situations. Because remember, we are together in this journey. Thanks for watching. If you enjoy this content, subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the notification bell and like this video. See you on the next one.